to have the opportunity to receive an education in the nature of mind um, it's, it, it's absolutely key and it's the most important and fundamental kind of education because whatever you're doing, wherever you are, however you're feeling, whoever you're with, um, your mind, your intelligence is naturally present. And so knowing the nature of our mind, of our intelligence, and knowing how we can best use it um, in a way that is powerful and loving and of benefit to ourselves and others is always useful because wherever we go, there we are. There our intelligence is. And this fundamental intelligence in the Balanced View Training we call open intelligence. And if you just stop thinking for a moment, and you allow yourself to notice what remains. There's an alertness, there's a cognizance, there's something that's aware of the next thought when it just spontaneously arises. So this is open intelligence. And the reason why it is important to first of all be introduced to this um, fundamental nature or essence of our intelligence, um, and then to gain confidence and assurance that it is always available for us that it is the thing about us that is constant and completely dependable, is that without this knowledge and without this education, everything is completely confusing. And the way that we live life is in a really limited, closed down, kind of shut off way. It's like living in a prison that we create out of our own experience, out of our own thoughts and emotions. And um, your question was just the perfect example of that. Because when we are completely focused on what we're thinking and feeling, and in the balance view training, we can just call all of that data. So any thoughts, emotions, sensations. When we collapse the intelligence or the mind onto one of these descriptions, and we begin to run with it, um, what happens is, is that the ability to relate with openness is immediately limited and collapsed too. And so your example of really feeling that there was a lot going on for you while you were listening to the talk and not really hear, hearing what was said is the perfect example of the way that um, if we allow the data to really master us, if we allow our experience to be the sole focus, it's very difficult to have that openness in relating. It's very difficult to listen to anything or anyone because we're so completely um, absorbed and um, focused on ourselves and what we're thinking and what we're feeling. And so it's really so simple and so beautiful to now be introduced to a different way that we can use our intelligence. So rather than focusing completely and solely and obsessively on our ever-changing descriptions, and that's another key point, is to see for ourselves that they're, they're changing all of the time. You know, your thoughts are never static. Your experience is a dynamic display, a, a stream of data, and it's always changing. And there's no way to fix it in place or to hold on to it. And so instead of trying to make sense of it or make sense out of one thought, so we pop, one thought can pop into our head, could, could be anything, could be, um, oh, I'm feeling really miserable this morning. And then the habit of following after that thought of looking for the reasons why I'm feeling miserable and coming up with an endless um, stream of descriptions about why I'm miserable and what's the cause of it and then how do I solve it? How do I get rid of this feeling of um, feeling uncomfortable or feeling miserable or feeling lonely or sad? That's one way to use the mind. But then, like we saw when that happens, basically that's all our focus is. It's collapsed into this narrow set of descriptions. So with the practice that's suggested here, that for a short moment, we simply stop describing. We stop trying to do anything with what's occurring for us. We allow this natural flow of data just to be as it is, this dynamic display of our own experience. And just for a short moment at the beginning, what happens there is that you notice this vastness of mind you directly and instinctively recognize that the basis of whatever you're thinking is this vast sky-like intelligence. And um, your question about seeing that 
when, when you stop trying, when you stop trying to be relaxed, for example, then what happens is that this natural ease, this ease of being, this naturally relaxed state of our mind just becomes obvious. So your experience is perfect and your observation is very keen that you see that in yourself. And a short moment is actually exactly that, just stopping to do anything, stopping even to try to be relaxed. We just allow ourselves to be as we are, with whatever is going on for us. And then that instinctive recognition that the basis of whatever we're thinking, feeling or sensing is this same sky-like intelligence, this same awareness, this same capacity to know. And then the benefits of that and the advantage of that is that we can allow things to be as they are. So I might have that thought, oh gosh, I feel really miserable this morning. And instead of running with that description, which is a really painful place to live because when I have that kind of thought, I don't know about you, but I can come up with, I can just give you, I could sit and bore you for hours as to why it's true and the reasons for it and probably ending up with some terrible sob story about how I'm just this terrible person and I shouldn't feel this feeling. Whereas in a short moment of allowing it to be as it is, what I see is that it arises spontaneously. So it just pops into my mind stream, oh, I feel terrible this morning. And instead of running with the story, I take a short moment of not doing anything with it. I just allow it to be as it is. I don't need to push it away. I don't need to follow after it and indulge it. I don't need to try and replace it. Because when I do any of those things, what I'm actually doing is saying, this is something that has an independent nature. This thought, I feel sad this morning, I need to do something about this. And um, like we saw in the video, this is trying to do something with actually with nothing. It's a passing thought. It's like a rainbow appearing in the sky. You know, and when a rainbow appears in, in the sky, you don't try and do anything with it. You're not worried that it's going to disappear. You know it's going to disappear. It's a fleeting appearance. It's an ephemeral um, shining display of sky. And so this is a perfect metaphor for understanding our own experience. Everything that we experience, including the thought, I feel miserable this morning, or I feel sad this morning, is like another rainbow appearing within the vast and sky-like nature of our mind, our intelligence. And so I can simply allow it to be as it is. And in that, this clarity of thinking, this bright shining intelligence that's the basis of the thought, as an inseparable from it, like the rainbow is inseparable from the sky within which it appears, becomes obvious and I know what to do and what to say in that moment that is a perfect expression of this ease of being. And that ease of being is the ability to relate with complete openness, love and care to myself and other people. And so I can see that um, Mostly when the thought comes up, I feel miserable this morning, the most beneficial thing I can do, the most caring and loving thing I can do is simply relax and not need to make a story about it. And then the next thought just pops into mind. Oh, isn't the lassie I had here this morning delicious? Or, you know, wh whatever it is. And just to become comfortable with this ever-changing flow of description, this ever-changing flow of experience. And to become comfortable with that First of all, so I can be comfortable with myself. And then what happens naturally there? When we feel comfortable and relaxed with ourselves, well then of course we can be comfortable and relaxed with other people, um, regardless of what's going on for them. And um, when other people are upset or distressed by what's happening for them, then it can be very tempting to get sucked into that, that drama or that story. And it, it can happen really easily. You know, when somebody's really caught up in what's going on for them. And the conventional way of thinking that I can maybe best help them by saying something like, oh, you know, how, how terrible for you. That, that must be awful. I really sympathize. You know, we mean well. You know, we, we really want to help this person. We want them to get rid of their suffering and their confusion and what's, what's painful and difficult for them. 
But what I've seen is that when I rest naturally with all of the different thoughts and feelings that being with somebody that's really upset can bring up, so I bring that um, focus back to my own experience, even just for a short moment, and I allow my thoughts and my emotions in that situation just to be as they are, which is another rainbow-like appearance in the vast expanse of sky, and I just settle into that ease of being whilst feeling everything fully, and this is the, the practice of short moments. So repeating short moments many times until this ease of being is obvious at all times, regardless of what the display might be, and so this is the practice and the training, then what happens is I'm much more capable to have a clear and balanced view on what will actually support this person. And most of the time what I've seen there from that, that relaxed vantage is that me getting in and jumping into that, that drama with them usually isn't the best thing to do. It's, um, there's, that, there's that story, the, the beautiful story of chicken licking, which maybe some of you know. And I can't remember how it starts. What, how, what falls on chicken licking's head? Something or like a leaf or... What's that? An acorn! That's right, there's, so there's chicken licking doing whatever chicken licking does, I don't know, eating something on the ground, and an acorn falls on his head. So chicken licking looks up and he sees the sky above him and he's convinced that the sky is falling on his head, he's just felt it. So he gets in this terrible state and just complete panic and runs around telling everyone that the sky is falling on his head. And eventually he goes to his mother, who's probably got some funky name but I can't remember, and he says to his mother, Mum, Mum, the, the sky's falling on my head. And the mother just looks at him and says, It's all all right. The sky isn't falling on your head. Just relax. And this is like the same kind of care we give ourselves. First of all, you know, when the drama starts and the panic and the, oh, the sadness and the, oh, I feel terrible this morning, you know, the, the sky's falling on our head. But in a short moment of just allowing it to be as it is, and recognizing the ease of being that's the basis of that thought or emotion. It's like we're, we're being the mother to our own chicken licking. And it's the same, it's, the, it's a great name, isn't it, chicken licking? And it's the same when other people are so caught up in what's going on for them. We can either jump in and say, you're right, the sky is falling on your head. What are we going to do? This is a disaster. Or we can remain completely at ease. And from there, we have access to this incredible sensitivity, like the, the, the real potency of mind that is deeply loving and caring, but also laser-like in its clarity of seeing what will really support this person here. How can I... Well, what I've seen is it, it's a naturalness of being where this compassion and care and desire to be available to support other people is then coupled with the skillfulness of knowing how to do it. So this innate desire to, you know, when somebody's upset, we, you know, we really feel it. But to know then that that feeling of that compassion and of feeling other people's upset and pain, this is our power to be of real benefit when we allow it to be as it is, when we recognize it as another rainbow-like appearance. Because then we're not caught up in the drama, we see we have a choice and then everything is available to us. You know, like, like suddenly the, the, all of the options we just see clearly of how we can respond, and the naturalness of seeing, you know, maybe we give them a hug, or maybe we give them a cup of tea, or maybe we change the subject, or may, you know, everything becomes available to us. It's like having access to the, all of the options, all of the vastness of mind, in a way that will allow us to be of most benefit to that other person but that is not available to us when we're focused in and collapsed in on our own thoughts and feelings about the situation. It's the same with the example about coming here and being so caught up in our own stuff that we can't hear the video. It's the same in any situation. And so the practical benefits of this are just like, like immense. First of all for ourselves, but then also for how we're going to live and relate in the world and with other people. And this, is, this capacity to allow yourself to be as you are is something that can be trained up. 
So it's the practice of short moments repeated many times and then coupling that again like we heard from the talk that we listened to with listening to other people simply stating the nature of reality and for me this was just amazing. Like I, I'd come across all kinds of philosophies and spiritual teachings and you know, all kinds of things and when I first heard the nature of reality stated in a way that was so clear, so direct and so unerring, there was something in me that, that immediately resonated with that. Like I, I couldn't quite pin it down, I couldn't put it into one of my neat little conceptual frameworks, but there was something in me that wanted to hear this again. Like I, I wanted to have this as my own direct experience. And so I kept listening. I, I downloaded some talks from the website or from the media table and I kept listening. And the more I heard it, the more I recognised this to just to be a simple statement of truth. And just by listening, that conviction dawns. Just by repeating the short moments, your assurance will naturally increase. And short moments of recognising the nature of reality. This, this vast, open, shining intelligence, inclusive of all data, including the data about death, thoughts and feelings and experiences related to death. Those two, nothing other than rainbow-like appearances in the vast expanse of sky-like mind. But really gaining certainty that that is the case with all experience, with all data. So there's a practice, there's a training. You can just come and hang out with the community and being around other people who are demonstrating this ease of being is also another powerful and effortless way to have this assurance increase in yourself.